Call Sue Kedgley. Thank you, uh, Mr Speaker. I'd like to start also by expressing the gratitude of the Green Party to all the staff in Parliament who have uh, kept the place going uh, over the last few days. And I hope they will understand that this was a protest. This was a protest against the slashing, the gutting of democracy in Auckland and against the profoundly undemocratic way in which this far-reaching bill, which will obliterate layers of democracy in Auckland, was whacked through this House uh, without uh, any ability for uh, people of Auckland to have a select committee or to be consulted in any way. So I hope that the staff of Parliament and I hope that people in, in New Zealand will understand that this is what this was about. It was a protest. I mean, what did they expect? What did the opposition, uh, the government rather, expect us to do? To sit down and just sit by while this uh, draconian uh, piece of legislation was rammed through this house. Now, Rodney Hyde has been very chipper over the last uh, after, since the dinner break. He's been very, very chipper, uh, bouncing up and interjecting and looking incredibly pleased with himself. And why wouldn't he? Why wouldn't he? He has pulled off a coup. In fact, it's a coup d'etat. He has justified uh, the. Uh, he has justified being the minister of local government, and no doubt uh, the axe coffers will be rolling with uh, contributions from people who will be deeply grateful for what he has done, who will be rubbing their hands at the uh, envisaging. Uh, the uh, assets, the $28 billion assets uh, that will eventually be privatised in a year or two and that they will be able to get their hands on. And of course, citizens and ratepayers who we know are gearing themselves up all over Auckland, uh, even as we speak, looking forward to the day when they can take over next uh, November, they hope, the council of uh, the super city of Auckland and unleash their agenda on the people of Auckland. So, Rodney Hyde, you have a lot of people who are very grateful to you, or at least a lot of business people, but I think that Aucklanders, once it sinks in what has happened here, I think they will be deeply ungrateful and I think there will be a, a major backlash against uh, when people realise what coup, what coup d'etat uh, Rodney Hyde has pulled off with his using the, the classic techniques of Rogernomics. Now, having pulled off this coup d'etat, having set up the super city, having wiped out eight uh, democratically elected councils, now they're pretending they're going to go out and consult. Oh, don't worry, Aucklanders. We're going to go out and we're going to consult and we're gonna set up this committee and we're gonna to listen to you. But the only trouble is, what are they going to listen to them about? I mean, what is there left to consult about? The whole, the whole thing is set in place and you know what there is left to consult about? One thing, one aspect, the power of the local boards. Now, with the super city is all in place, that's all ready to be taken over by John Banks, who will be the next Tsar of Auckland. We hope he won't, uh, as David Cunn said, but that's the possibility we need to face up to. And he will have these um, unlimited powers of a mayor that no other power, no other mayor in Auckland uh, will have. And the only counterbalance to this pe the power of the mayor who will completely control the super city will be these local boards. Now, let's have a look at the legislation and see what the local boards are. The first thing you notice in the legislation, it says the local boards are, is not a local authority. Can I repeat that? The local board is not a local authority. What is it then? It is an unincorporated society. So this is what these local boards will be. And they have no powers in the legislation at all. The only powers it will be will be delegated by the Super Council. So the Super Council may decide to delegate some piffling little powers, or it may decide not to delegate anything. 
So then, we, then it says we're going to have these little local boards, and they're going to have four to nine members each on these little local boards. And we were told in a briefing they're going to be paid $10,000 each, these four people, and they are going to represent 70,000 people. So the people of Manukau are going to find themselves, instead of with their, 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 their city council, which as far as I know, most of the residents of Manukau are very, very satisfied with, what are they going to end up with? Two councillors on the Auckland Super City and this piffling little board with four members uh, and an unincorporated society, not even a, a, a local authority. And then we look at what are these local boards going to do? Well, they're going to have absolutely no resources and no power. They will not be able to hire staff. They will not be able to own anything. They won't be able to levy rates, borrow money, make bylaws, or develop plans. So what will they do? Absolutely nothing. This is not local democracy, Mr Hyde. This is a pathetic joke. And then they have got rid of the Māori seats. One of the only decent, re well, one of the best recommendations of the Royal Commission. What an outrage that the government would simply obliterate uh, the Māori seats. Now, I want to warn Aucklanders that um, this consultation that we're now going to embark upon, having in fact set the whole thing up, is, I'm afraid to say, it's going to be a completely pointless exercise because a, a select committee, everyone knows, is completely pointless if the government has already made up its mind. Let us make, ma let us make no mistake, the government has made up its mind. Don't be conned, but nevertheless, I still urge <coughs> Aucklanders, all of those who understand what is going on here, to make your voices heard, to protest at this select committee, because you won't have anything else to do apart from maybe talk about the powers of these pitiful, toothless, impotent local boards, but nevertheless turn up, because the Prime Minister said in this House, he said, every Aucklander who wishes will be heard in this select committee. So I urge you, even though it's too late, go get out there and go and uh, make your protests, make your voices heard. Now, I would like that what, I, what I'm really worried about is that, well, I'm going to predict that this super city is not going to bring about any, any savings, any savings at all. They've done, international research has been done, and none of these forced amalgamations, which is what this is, none of these super cities have ever delivered any savings. Or, and, and most of them have actually come out and estimated savings. Of course, Rodney Hyde's refused to admit, tell us whether there'll be any savings at all. But anyway, they haven't. Some of them, they promised 18% savings, and they maybe would have come up with 1 or 2%. It will disenfranchise whole communities of Auckland. There will be a backlash against it, and it will not solve any of the so-called problems of Auckland. People, the problems of Auckland don't relate to structure. This whole debate has been about structure. What they, the, the, the problems people have with local government are things like the phony consultation, the lack of accountability and transparency. None of these will be, will be solved by this. And people of Auckland are going to wake up and find they've got this huge, bloated, remote, inaccessible super city, a bit like a super tanker, and they're not going to be able to access it, access it or influence it. It will be bigger. It will have $28 billion of um, assets, and uh, it will um, be this huge mega city, one of the biggest in the Western world. And the irony is that in most places, such as the United Kingdom, they're going in exactly the opposite direction. They've worked out that super cities, big super cities, they don't work. They're not flexible. They're not able to deal with the problems of local democracy. So they're going in exactly the opposite direction. They're setting up local councils uh, which are smaller, which are closer to the people, which are genuinely uh, uh, cl close to the people. And I predict that we'll have this big, bloated super city for a few years, and then we'll work out that it has been a complete disaster, a huge waste of, uh, waste of money. It is only, it had, far from solving the problems and the alleged parochialism of Auckland, it will, it will only unleash resentment, 
uh, and, uh, and un disempowerment. And so then, in a few years' time, we'll go back and we'll go back to what we had before. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honey, how are we up? Now, Mr. Speaker, Kuratato Katoetifari. Not quite. Mr. Speaker, 